Welcome back, everybody. Uh, as promised, uh, you know I'm going to continue to do videos on some of the SMA programs that are out there. Um, but first, before getting into oligonucleotides, um, I wanted to just recommend a book that I, I found highly interesting, and it was um, definitely relevant to to our disease and. Um, it describes a, a method for Parkinson's disease, and it, it used um, a pump to uh, actually inject uh, a therapy. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that that's what's going to be needed for some of these current therapies, um, and it, it really hasn't been discussed yet. But I just wanted to give you a synopsis of, on the back of the book, which I found pretty interesting, and make of it what you will. Um, the book is Monkeys in the Middle, and it's by Nick Nelson. Highly recommended. So let me read the back for you real quick. A miracle drug kept out of reach. Some called it the cure, an experimental drug known as GDNF had actually reversed the effects of Parkinson's disease in rats and monkeys. Fifty brave patients volunteered to have holes drilled through their skulls and GDNF pumped into their brains. The clinical trial results were stunning. Men and women once thought to be beyond hope leapt back into normal life. They could walk, run, smell, taste, and make love once again. It all came to an abrupt halt when Amgen, Inc. cut the GDNF trial short in the fall of 2004. 2004, an important date. The company said it had found disturbing side effects in monkeys, but the danger to humans was unclear. Amgen's decision started a race against the clock as patients battled the corporation for access to GDNF, even as their previous symptoms began to return. In Monkeys in the Middle, investigative reporter Nick Nelson recounts the true story of the patients who took on the world's biggest biotechnology company for the right to be kept alive. Now, the reason why I said 2004 um, was important was because the program was halted in 2004. Many of the patients in the, in the disease community uh, were, were uh, extremely upset about, you know, the halt of a potential therapy. And, uh, and I wanted to show some of the pressures uh, within a disease community. Um, and he, he is chapter four. Uh, here's a paragraph. A pen and pad of paper lay on the table in front of me, and I emblazoned upon each was a drug company logo. I looked around, and I noticed more logos on tote bags and flyers and banners. I flipped to the sponsored section of the week's agenda. Of the 12 sponsors listed, 10 were drug companies. Amgen, Inc. Uh, topped the alphabetical list. At that point, I knew little about what I came to understand is a symbiotic relationship among drug companies and nonprofit groups like PAN, who need the sponsorship in order to exist. In her opening remarks, PAN Executive Director a Amy Comstock thanked Amgen Boston Life Sciences, Schwartz Pharma, Department of Defense, Novartis, Medtronic, and Bio, and others for their sponsorship of the forum. It takes a lot of money to put on the forum, and we are grateful to the sponsors, she said. Amgen had donated 50000 for the 2006 forum and had done the same in each of the two previous years. Make of that what you will. So what I wanted to discuss with the... Um, with oligonucleotide therapies, right? Um, according to history, there there have been toxicities in non-human primate studies. I haven't seen this really discussed. And uh, in addition, um, the history shows or the data shows that uh, a systemic approach is going to be what's needed. So notice, like our our trial now is intrathecal. So I just wanted to temper excitement uh, within our community. Um, there's a long road to go. I mean, this is the initial initial step. So, um, you know, right now we're just trying intrathecal. So let me start with um, with this paper here, right, to show you some of the histories of non-human primate studies with oligonucleotides. Complement activation and hemodynamic changes following intravenous administration of phosphorotheoate oligonucleotides in the monkey, and this is by Gibraltar. And a, a, a sentence in this paper is, uh, P.S. oligonucleotides have been found to be well tolerated in mice, agrawal 1991, and rats. However, in monkeys, acute hemodynamic toxicity has been observed. This is a, there is a report of hypotension and death in, in rhesus monkeys following bolus intravenous in administration of P.S. oligonucleotide, Cornish et al., 1993. So, you know, 
I, I haven't seen I haven't seen that that paper discussed within the community. You know, um, the other thing I wanted to highlight was uh, Antisense Research and Application Handbook of Experimental Pharmacology, uh, 1998, Safety and Tolerance of Phosphorotheoates in Humans. It's a paper that, and it says. Uh, Antisense oligonucleotides represent a promised, rational, and seductive approach to drug discovery and development. Several early attempts to develop therapeutic agents using this technology targeted clinical conditions which could be treated by local administrations of oligonucleotides, thereby avoiding the systemic use. However, in order for antisense oligonucleotides to reach their full potential as therapeutic entities across a wide variety of disease applications, systemic use is likely to be necessary identifying, solving, and solving any problems associated with systemically administered oligonucleotides is therefore of major importance. Here's another paper. It's complement activation is responsible for acute toxicities in uh, rhesus monkeys treated with uh, PS oligonucleotides. And uh, one of the sentences, changes occurred at or near uh, end of infusion and return to normal over time. One of the three animals died approximately four hours following infusion of 20 um, milligrams per kilogram of Isis 2302 alone. So, you know, um, here's another paper. I mean, we could just keep going on and on. Uh, immunoregulatory activity of CPG oligonucleotides in humans and non-human primates. It says, Due to the evolutionary divergence of CPG recognition between species, CPG O. DN that are most active in rodents are poorly immuno immunostimulatory in primates. Thus, evidence that CPG ODN have therapeutic ac activity in mice must be confirmed in primates. So you see the difference in data between rodents and primates. Lastly, uh, evaluation of renal effects of an antisense of PS deoxynucleotide in monkeys. And it says, antisense PS uh, oligos are therapeutic agents that provide target specificity resulting from Watson-Crick-based pairing. However, there are nonspecific effects that in some instances result in toxicity. These compounds accumulate in the kidney and induce renal proximal uh, tubular degeneration at high doses. The relationship between accumulation of PS oligos in the kidney indicators of renal toxicity and histomorphology were investigated in rhesus monkeys. Um, so you see, we, we do see issues uh, in these uh, in these programs that uh, that have not been discussed. Here's another one: the application of antisense oligonucleotide technology to the brain. Some pitfalls. We have demonstrated that ODNs cause neurotoxic damage following repeated daily infusions in the amygdala. The damage observed was greatly diminished when a time interval between infusions was extended. So, you know, um, a lot of researchers graciously have pointed out, um, you know, some of the issues with some of the other programs. So I, I thought I'd, I'd help out by showing some issues uh, with this program.